All right, and then we'll follow the morning kind of salary board meeting to order of May 12th. I would ask that everyone please stand and join me in the pledge of allegiance. I mean, the following moment thoughts. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
a couple things she's going to be doing that she doesn't do now, but she does move up to the position as far as uh, tax bill programming and things of that nature. Tax what programming? Tax bill. Bill programming. I wish we had the notes from when we kind of consolidated everything in uh, assessment. Because my memory of that was that, that we ended up saving money on what the overall pay down the department was. Um, because basically, Brian became the director. We never filled the deputy position. Yeah, we do. I don't want to say we eliminate, but we downsize one yeah. person. And, and, uh, Maybe it was a net, maybe it was a neutral change, but I, you know, my memory was that there was, you know, because obviously we didn't have a deputy. And, you know, I mean, my preference would be that there be a deputy down there. There should be, um, but you know, I guess the, the, the question is, is to, you know, how do we fit it into the budget? Similarly, for me, it's a matter of timing. I agree that there should be a deputy. The question is. Can we do it now, or should we wait until the budget season? Well, I mean, I guess my thought was, um, we're not changing the number of bodies, but we are changing the pay rate. Is that correct? So we would empty the position that this person's in now and fill the deputy deputy director position. If I'm understanding the proposal correctly. Well, as we do need to recreate the deputy director position. I see. It was done away with as part of the I see. Okay. Got it. I think, what, three years ago now? Yeah. Two and a half, something like that. Plus, that was kind of a hybrid position because he was doing GIS as well. That's true. Were you in the union back then? Because I was not. Oh, interesting. When I moved to deputy, I was in the name of the union. Oh, huh. Can we um, potentially table this uh, with the idea of looking at the, the SFM budget and the same so we can be rearranged in order to accommodate just to, to, to make sure that we're within the budget? The motion okay. to table is non debatable if there's a second. A second. Uh, well, I guess, I mean, Brian, is that, does that seem reasonable? That's fine with me. Because I just like to know the numbers. Because then, if we get in the end of the year and we're over, then you know, it's kind of like in hindsight, we should have waited or made some kind of adjustments. Anyway, I heard a motion to table. So I'll make a motion to table this in for a review uh, of the next one. For the next one. I'll, I'll second that. Name and second the table. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay, thanks, Brian. Thank you. Then you're going to provide us some supporting materials, Brian? Uh, sure, would you like? Or should we get those from Lisa, I guess? Or, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong person. <laughs> elections Deputy Director. Uh, this was brought up in elections budget hearing last year and was budgeted actually for the full year, uh, but we did not uh, opt to do anything about it yet. So the proposal before us would be to create a deputy director uh, for elections and voter registration. This would be a union position akin to uh, other deputy director positions. And again, if you answer the question, Danny, it was budgeted. This one was? Okay. It was, it was budgeted for all 12 months. Okay. Uh, and it's also understood that, uh, at least at this time, that it's temporary until the end of the year when, uh, uh, you know, at least we'll be retiring. What? Kind <laughs> 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 of reevaluate the, uh, yep. the staffing. Yep. Okay. Any questions? So I guess, based on that statement, you know, we had that question come up before. Is there a what's the term? There's an end to it, a hard stop. It's not a good Okay. 
And because what's happened in the past, if we've approved things and we never put a hard stop on it, and they might still be going on today, who knows? So that's, I just want to make sure that that was the intent. So in this case and in those cases, it was clear in the salary board minutes. The question I think needs to go to HR, which is what is your process for tracking the end dates for positions? Because that may or may not have happened. But uh, I mean, in this case, I don't see how it would become a problem because no. Lisa's pretty bad on retirement. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, Lisa's already given her resignation, her retirement letter, and I already have her payroll information. I do payroll sheets. Um, so basically what will happen is I'll just, um, the transition will take place with the table sheets and we are already prepared to make that transition, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Other questions? So I make a motion to uh, create the Deputy Director of Elections voter registration position for the rate being proposed through 1231. Is uh, 40,600. Wow. So it'd be $16.29, and then I calculated as well with 16 days remaining, we should refill the position immediately. Yep. So that's worth the 18000 For the amount of presented. Right, correct, correct, yeah. <clears throat> so should we caveat that motion to put an end date on it? Or? He did. I said. Oh, oh I'm good. sorry. Uh, I did. Yeah. Okay, so it's okay. Yes. So help me out this. Kim, is that 1629? That's the, the deputy across the board. Across the yes. board yep. per the union contract. Per the union contract. Okay. That's okay. And you've heard a motion and now you're a second. Second. Okay. Discussion? <coughs> I think that everybody's looking forward to formalizing this and getting it done. And Really appreciate the work that you guys do. And, you know, Crystal, you've done a marvelous job helping Lisa out. And Lisa, you've done a marvelous job helping with the transition. And you know, looking forward to getting this done. Just now, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion to create a deputy director of elections of our registration position unionize the rate set uh, to expire on 12 31 of 2021. Please say aye. 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 Motion without opposed, nay. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, register and reporter. Um, quickly, let me um, explain how the voting process goes for this. So, um, according to the county code section 1622, the board of uh, salary board is the treasurer, the three commissioners. And then in instances where there is an elected official or uh, other I don't need to go into the details, but basically, uh, because it doesn't apply here, but the elected officials such as the sheriff, or in this case, uh, appointed or judge, uh, would be able to uh, be essentially the tie-breaking vote. Um, and so you have the authority to come in narrowly on things that pertain to your department only, and you have a vote. Uh, there were some questions since you're appointed and don't carry all of the um, rights and duties of an elected official because you've not yet been elected. There was a question as to whether or not um, you would have a vote. However, I think according to 1625, it's moderately clear that you do. So uh, we would be accepting any, any motion from you uh, to add, or excuse me, to take the uh, part time position, which is currently your deputy director of which side? Register of Register of Wills and admit the full time. Um, Kim, would you like to walk through the proposal with us? Um, yes. So currently, um, the part time position there um, is also at the rate of 1629, and I have her working at 999 hours, which is the maximum that a part time position can work. Um, and then what I did is I increased it under the proposed full time, so you can see the difference there. Um, and then that office works 1,820 hours a year. Um, being the part-time position now would not have benefits. I added the 21,000 as our random number, not random, but um, what we calculate the benefit portion to be. So you're going to see the difference there between the two. Um, previously, we had decided, and excuse my memory, I don't remember the time frame on this, but back last year, I believe, at the end of the year, 
it was determined that we were going to try the registered recorder's office to see if we could have a part-time um, employee there instead of a full-time. Um, and then as time progressed and the courts have been opening, Stephanie had brought to our attention that she feels that um, moving that position from part-time to full-time is warranted. Um, she has provided um, some documents. I think everybody got it in the packet. Um, Do you want to walk us through the documents you provided? Just, um, just a second. You okay, guys don't have to stick around. Well, 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 as you can see, it increases each month. Um, I just was letting you know that the current exam office reporting has continued to increase. Oh, they're out of order. That's why it's mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry. Did I turn on the order? Sorry. Ah, I'm sorry. So, what do we have to was it the beginning of last year when you took over? What, what, was, what point did you okay, I can't remember how it was. January 4th. Uh, it was the end of last year that you took over. Yeah, this year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, in short, to preempt your question, Denny, <laughs> the budgeting question, uh, it's a partial budget and partial not. Okay. The salary was still included, mm -hmm. but the assumption was that it would not be a full time in this year. And as a consequence, the benefits budget was not included in a nice uh, full time employee in that, in that position. It's kind of a mixed bag. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, frankly, it's an error. Like, this will made an error when they budgeted it. Okay. Because in essence, they created enough of a budget to have most of a full-time employee payroll-wise, but not for any of the benefit, okay. which is obviously an impossible scenario. Right. So, <clears throat> so I can only chalk that up to an error. Okay. And, and this was the this was one of the positions that was full-time previously. So because they had, there were two there were two full-timers. And now there's just one and one part time, right? Okay. How long has it been like that? Six months. Okay, so um, I just want to state that I made my comments that I'm about to give you prior to looking at the documentation provided. Okay? And my comments are generic, meaning it doesn't matter who ends up being elected into this position. So it doesn't matter who I support in this election. I look at this um, in this manner. It doesn't matter if it's in the budget or not. If this office was in the private sector, this would be coming up for consideration. The workload in the office doesn't justify this change. If the person occupying the office was hands-on helping with the work, this change would not be necessary. So in previous years, being on Facebook and shopping on Amazon are not hands-on in doing the work. Um, whoever proposes this and votes in favor of it is not being responsible to the taxpayers of Warren County. And I can only speak from the year 2012 to current. The Register and Reporter's Office has demonstrated to me and others that they have idle time on their hands. The morning starts with an hour to an hour and a half of chat time and laughter. Um, and then at the end of the day, it could end at three or between 3 and 4.30. Um, transactions stop for the, for the customers at 4 o'clock, and they're pushed to the next day. 
Um, when there's no work to do, the deputies are called into the office for more chat time. And if they attempt to work, they're told they're making everybody else look bad. So with that in mind, I am not in support. I, I think if anybody wants to work efficiently, they can work with the elected position, a full-time, and a part-time. Thank you. Thoughts? <laughs> I'm trying to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe I've seen you in my office mm -hmm. observing to make those comments. All you have to do is walk by. You have not or, been in my office mm -hmm. for a whole day's worth to see what we did. Okay. So you do not have the right to make those comments. Yeah, I do. Because I have a couple of people that have worked in that office that have provided information. It's been obvious. And if you really want to go down this path, if you really want to go down this path, I'll ask you where you and Lori go before the end of the day. I guess for so, me, it's a little more about fact-based. I understand where you're coming from from January, February, March, and the fact that it's increasing. But I don't know that that's a trend. I guess that's my question. And if it's not all budgeted, my thought would be, you know, given the fact that we're almost six months uh, through the year, to consider just leaving it as it is right now, um, and then seeing if, um, you know, if there's any redesign or if the volume continues to increase, and then addressing it at that time. That's my thought. Okay. So, going forward for the rest of this discussion, uh, why don't we play it by normal Robert's rules and then uh, call acknowledge you so we don't have buying in. Um, Stephanie, your response? To Trisha? Either. Okay. You have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, it needs to be a full-time position. Um, I thought I'd made it very clear. I've offered anybody to come to my office and spend the day with me to see um, what we do and how, how things are done or whatever. Um, nobody has come there to do that. Um, I, need, I need her to be full time. Would you be interested in having a time study done? Would that be helpful? I mean, us staying there, like if I came and sat in your office for a day, that's not going to be telling anything. Time study, like what are you talking about? So we would um, pre previously had other offices participate in this. We could have somebody like a Susquehanna County uh, come in and benchmark based on other counties. And tend they tend to usually tell us that we're understaffed compared to other counties. Uh, actually review time sheets and the number of documents. Just to Trisha's point, we don't really know, like, we don't work in our we don't really know what these numbers mean. Um, whereas they would, and they could you know, make a recommendation of staffing. Um, so if that's something that would interest you, I would personally be happy to like, get an estimate on what it would take to uh, have someone come in and, and evaluate that. Um, it's usually been a fairly reasonable amount of money in order to do such a thing. Um, otherwise, I haven't heard of second to your motion. Was there a motion? I didn't. Well, essentially, it's a motion. By virtue of her coming and presenting, I was assuming that you were going to make a motion <laughs> to yes. take a part-time position. Make part-time part -time. position full-time. Yes. Right. Any other? I'm uh, oh, sorry. And, are you interested in that kind of time study? Would you allow that? Um, I mean, I don't think it's necessary, but if you need to do that to make your decision, then. Okay. I, I guess my, I, I see both sides of the discussion. I mean, um, you know, traditionally there was two people in there that were full time. You know, and I, I understand that. To have kind of level of support in the office. Um, I guess the, the couple of questions I would have is aside from the time study is to have this, this is just an automated report, right? Um, you know, have it go back pre COVID, like in 
to have like more numbers to see what the spikes and decrease. Because I mean, the number of documents is is, is relevant in the fact that we have to be filing for each of those. Um, and then the other thing would be is, is I would recommend the same thing as far as looking at the budget and seeing what areas could be cut to accommodate this, if that's the case, you know, removed or whatever. Um, because I think that it's important to look at the budget and say, does it fit into it or not? You know, and if it doesn't, then, you know, I mean, that, that's, I mean, I, it, it, this isn't the only time, I mean, we run into this all the time where we do the budget, like everybody's kind of like, oh, okay, and then we get done with it, and then midway through the year, they're like, you know, we want, yes, we want something this, or something like that. It's like, um, you know, and I, and I know you're just coming into this and everything, you know, but try, trying to, Focus on that as a as an item. I think is important too. So and those would be my suggestions. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm not necessarily opposed to any of these points. I guess or concerns. I guess. So I, Jeff, I have to respectfully disagree with the point of um, it's been tradition to have three people in there. There's basically two people do the work. One person. Um, and that's been tradition since who knows how long. Um, so I would kind of disagree. I can support a part-time person, but not both. Yeah, and I mean, I, I guess my thing is, is that there's two points that I guess I would make. One is, is that across the board, any this entire courthouse is based on people looking at the other offices and determining what they do and don't do and then judging them for it. It happens all over the place. Every discussion we have starts with that. Okay, so that's one piece of it. Without a time study, county-wide, it's really hard to determine how much any time anybody spends on anything. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. but to be fair, like nobody else has had that same level of scrutiny. Second thing is, is if any of the elected officials in this county are gonna start throwing stones at each other about who spends time doing what, I, I would, my response would be glass houses. Because if you want to hear a shriek like you've never heard, have the legislature pass a bill that says that you have to have a time sheet if you're elected. Okay? Like, well, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. And the thing is, is I understand what you're saying. I do. And it's not that I, I think that there needs to be some evaluation and everything, but I think that, uh, you know, I would try to have that be measured, you know, not. Okay, so, uh, yes. So, what I showed you as far as um, the numbers, those are just like documents. With each document, there's a process that is timely also with that. So, kind of a little piece that you're saying. Um, and as far as what Denny's talking about, I mean, I'm me. Your opinion on that. I'm basing my opinion on 
information that's been provided and what I've observed. And to, for the prior register and reporter to take you or an employee during working hours to a local club to have alcoholic beverages and leave one person in the office. That's me. Is it, no, it's it shows me it doesn't support. Yeah, that's fair to say. No, it's not. No, it's not. So the uh, motion has been made. Is, is there a second? I don't hear a second. It sounds like the consensus is let's get objective facts. So we'll have contact. I will personally contact Susquehanna uh, in order to find out an estimate on a time study that would go before the commissioners. So in the meantime, can um, you? Two things that I would ask is, is one is to uh, provide the, the like these document numbers. Have them go back like maybe two years. Um, so just and even if it's in a spreadsheet, so that you can see just what the trend is as far as the number goes. And then the second thing would be to work with the fiscal director to review the budget to determine if there's any room to move things around in order to accommodate uh, the changes that we need to make in order to have the full time. Sounds like that's a counter motion to take. Well, if there's, I'm not tabling anything. There was no second. Well, yes, but the agenda item was on the agenda. So okay, I would make a motion to table with the understanding that those couple of pieces and your phone conversation will take place in the next month. Okay. Your second to table. Second. Motion made and second. Did you capture that? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Motion to carries. Motion is to the Table. Now, back to the first item of discussion. Single point of entry, next victim. I don't know if I want to sit at that table. <laughs> this item has been on the agenda for a couple of months now. Um, the sheriff brought additional information, and I want to give him a chance to present. Sure, if I can steal my own work. Uh, we had a DUI in the parking lot, we had to deal with it. Down here. That parking lot's been yeah, that parking lot's been the place to be. I'm telling you, heads, heads. I'm asking for another guy. Um, is it, is it yeah. like that if you sit in one spot long enough, you meet everybody? I think that's like that. I'm hanging out in the wrong places. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's a car that I always thought there was a magnet buried under the state hospital, but it may have that holds me to shift it to this building here. Um, it just in short, because if I get to talk, we'll be here till five o'clock. But uh, deputies, man, single point of entry. Currently, I have two single point guards. We'll call them. Those guards, easy math to the board, make half what a deputy makes. Um, I, I want to shift away because I can't just grab a bunch of deputies off the street. I can't create sheriff's deputies quickly, but I can create single point guards. Quickly. So my, the, the basis of the thought here and, and all the savings thereof is um, I've moved a rotating deputy from a Monday through Friday position to a Tuesday through Saturday. Because Saturdays are traditionally covered with overtime or a part-time man, costing, we'll just say, extra money. So me moving that schedule literally one day has saved Saturdays, just in itself. So, that saving alone is, is written in here. Um, if we use an overtime rate, $14,000 easy math. Um, for the overtime for the Saturday, if we use a part-time rate, it's $9,500, again, easy math. So there's $9,500 instantly saved with me just changing a deputy schedule. Okay, now at the cost of, now I have the Monday that that deputy is missing. So now I'm missing a guy on an 8 to 4 Monday through Friday, which I need to make up to continue mm -hmm. working at a, we'll just say, a bare bones schedule. So to make that up, I would like to put two single point guards at the front door, thereby eliminating the need of me getting another deputy or paying Peter for Saturday for Monday for Paul. So if we man Mondays with two guards, that guard rate is again half that of the deputy easy math. So there's another cost savings which is which is um, broke down into here. Okay, so that's the original thought when I start this, and then um, looking through the court schedules, court 
for us, busy days for us, and, and I'll use a very generic term, bad guys. Bad guys come to the courthouse Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, okay? Tuesdays, Central Court, Wednesdays, heavy Central Court, Friday, Sentence. So Mondays and Thursdays, we'll just say, uh, Thursdays are trial days, which are now catching up from COVID, so Thursdays are getting booked as we speak. So the heavy days are again, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. So starting this proposal, I thought, well, if Mondays work, why not do Monday and Thursday with two guards rather than one of my deputies and a guard? Again, giving me, we'll just say, an extra guy on Thursday to do the warrants, to chase the bad guys, to serve our civil papers, and all that, which aren't getting done bare bones staff, trying to just keep the courthouse going Monday through Friday. So that's what this morphed into, and it gives you the savings a year. Um, which is quite substantial. Where this comes again at a, at a cost, my two single point guards, as I'm calling them, would be over the 999, would be over the 24 hours a week, if we do that. So I would need a third single point guard, at least, to split those extra hours now, because now we have, an, right now it's a single point guard two, single point guard three. That makes up our week. So wait, who's on second? <laughs> <laughs> single point guard A works two, two days this week. Single guard B works three. Next week, it reverses. So one, 16 hours, 24. Next week, I'm in the 16 hour boat. He's in the 24 boat. We can't do that because I just added a shift for Monday. So now it's 24, 24. Now I'm running out of time to man that for the year, especially if I throw that Thursday. And the, the, the caveat to all this is, again, hiring a single point guard at half the cost of the deputy, I'm not asking for additional money. I'm asking for, we'll just say, a redirection of my part-time money. So the part-time money that I'm saving at 9,500 that I'm saving just from the Saturday shifts, I think it's roughly uh, 11,000. So I'm only spending, give or take, a couple thousand more by doing this um, out of my own part-time budget. But I'm really not. It's, it is truly a Peter to Paul. I'm just using that money in a different resource. So the question is, is how many part-time positions do you have available now? Right now I have two part-time single, and that's where it's split. I have three part-time deputy positions that, uh, that are on our books. Those part-time deputy positions, I can, I can count on them virtually not. I mean, they're just they're, they're employed other places. They don't have the, that's definitely Monday through Friday, it's almost virtually impossible to get them to work. Saturdays, they can work. So you've got three part-time deputies. Uh, those are positions that you have available. Correct. That does not include the single point. That is, that is guys weren't attaching them. So the single point deputy got one of them right now. I have two. So you have two of them and two they part, alternate. Two alternating. Part time, or yes, two alternating part time, we'll call them guards, single point okay. guards. Okay, so how many full timers do you have? My staff? Yep. Uh, I think there's eight. Okay, so you got eight. Are those eight fill available positions? I have, I have eight full. One was just hired Monday, and I have one in the hopper. Okay, so is that eight uh, or ten? Uh, let me that's, count. That's that's six, and then you've got two. Six and two. I believe the total is eight. Yes. Yeah, and then two, and then you have obviously the chief and deputy. We do. Chief and I, which makes better. the ten of them. Right. So, so then you have two better. So are you are you proposing to remove like one of the like one or two of the part time positions, and then make turn that into a single point position? No. No. The point. Is I just want to move the invested full timer so that it's not. So he's taking overtime budget money and shifting it into the part-time employee budget. Actually, not even doing that, just taking part-time deputy money and making it part-time guard money, which it's allocated in that, because again, you're talking union, not union, you're, so I, don't, I was told I can't blur that line of part-time deputy budget mm -hmm. to supply a civilian, or to pay a civilian to work because I'm what do you say? I'm, out, I'm, I'm jumping that line. Well, we could budget adjust. Like, uh, well, that's a second. That is a separate conversation yeah. that commissioners need to have at a, for a budget meeting, essentially. But 
ultimately, yeah. it's not going to cost. It can only save the county money. Like, I, can, I, well, let me. I've heard that, that so many times. <laughs> well, I understand, but in this situation, like, what do you supply in the security guards? A, a polo shirt? A, a polo shirt and some five eleven khaki pants. Um, now, well, I don't care how many part times you have. <laughs> yeah, the outfit of deputy, easy mass employees, eight hundred dollars. Like, so we'll just say the guy was hired, given an offer of employment, just to make him look like this is roughly five grand. Now, that's not counting the forty plus we're going to pay him an overtime to go to the police academy plus his wages for the five months. I think the, the, the hiring of a person, be it single point, is cheaper than having oh, a sheriff. Five five. My issue is is that if you were eliminating a deputy position, then you could make the case that you're saving money, but you're keeping all of those people right, but and yet, paying them, okay. and we're adding a person. I have. I have right. yet to use a, a part-time deputy this year, due to my changes yeah, that I've made. And, and that's what I'm saying is, is, okay, if we're taking it from someplace, it's fine with us. Okay, I can get rid like, of I'm just saying that I want to make sure that the taking happens. <laughs> like, that's all I'm saying. Like, okay, now, no, 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 let's just, put it this way. If we, if we do this, and we sit down at budget time, work. and we discuss increasing the budget, Dramatically to cover overtime or something else. I, I'm going to say I told you so. I'm well, just saying that. If 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 I have 121,000 part-time funds, right. and I'm only going to use 30,000 due to my shift changes, I'm going to use an additional 10 of that to put a single point guy on. I'm still going to be under my 121. Right. That's that's what I'm proposing, and that's what I, I'm foreseeing. But and this this is why I wouldn't want to get rid of the third. There's a week a year, like mid-August, I will I will be out there with a sign begging somebody to come work for me for a week there. That's where those guys literally, that week is where they're gonna come into play. Um, because I will I won't have, I don't have and I shall not have that many people to cover what I need to cover at least that week. And then again, it's a big election that night. Um, yeah, we would maybe go find a that day to get a part-time deputy in. So or Three, depending on the situation. So if I eliminate the position, I can't call that guy in who's already been outfitted, already assured. Uh, totally understand that. Mm -hmm. And I understand what you're pitching generally. Um, I guess I, I would say that I'm kind of in the same boat uh, as some of the other discussion has been, you know, is that we've had these same discussions previously. And at the end of the year, we have a conversation about increasing the budget the next year because we, oh, we got this cost, this cost, this cost, and this cost. So to me, this is a good opportunity to, you know, because I, I, I understand what you're saying, generally speaking, I do. And I support that. You know, I just want to make sure that what's, that that happens, and then at the end of the year, we come out in a neutral position because otherwise we're just adding another position um, to, you know, we're just, it's just another position we're at. December, so. December of this year, if God will, if the creek don't rise, I'll have two more deputies graduating, we'll just say, in uh, December, Christmas. Okay, so I would have two more deputies to work any detail we would ever want. And the third pending, the one pending hire, um, there's one man that's in there that's already at 120. Again, I'll fit him two weeks class, he'll be on the street in less than a month. Working, you know, so that will just say catches me up to at least covering things um, on a Monday through Friday, except that Monday again we come short mm -hmm. because of the Saturday standing. So but um, like I said, I don't I don't know. I just to me it's a win win win. <coughs> um, and there's a little bit of in here there's just to be transparent, there's a little bit of um We'll just say gear that I'm looking forward to augment that, which is under give or take 800 bucks. Um, there's a little bit of training involved um, down the road, but again, I think I can keep that all within. Well, that all goes in the yep. you know, grant. That's what I'm saying. We're, we're, that's all kept within another another. Area. Well, I, I guess my point is, is that <coughs> my bottom line point would be to what would be great is to have a sheet that says, okay, this is what my budget is. This is where I'm pulling the money from. This is where we're going to end up at the end of the year. And then that would dictate. I feel like that was provided. The I, chief deputy has been trying to get a word in, though, so I'd like to get on the floor briefly. 
just real quick, we have three part-time deputies on the books. We have three time part-time deputy positions not filled mm -hmm. that are vacant. Okay. That's just it, to augment. We do have three part-time deputy positions that aren't filled. They had, they had left and we did not fill them because we did not find applicants. Okay. So you're kind of reshifting then those part-time deputy positions to kind of the single point entry guard concept? Mm. I can, especially if we can't find them, I'll give up something that costs me right. means nothing to me. Right. Absolutely. Right. If that satisfies the table, sure, I'll give up one of those part-time positions. So now I have three filled, two empty. I'm mm -hmm. totally good with that. Okay. Because it's something I can't use or fill anymore. Right. So yeah, sure. Were those budgeted for as well? I'm assuming yeah, the part-timers so, were. Okay. So I, I get it. I, you, you keep saying though this this concept of whether or not the part-time position was budgeted or not. That's not how it works in the AFSCME union. The point is you have a budgeted line item, and then you have these incremental hours that make up that. It has nothing to do with the number of positions. It has everything to do with how much you utilize them. So I really don't care if you wanted to have five single point of entry guards, because really it's just going to cost us some pants and a polo shirt. The point is you can't use them for more than X number of hours to go over budget. Correct. So and I don't really understand why the board is interested in this, like, you know, I mean, it's not like one of the uh, SEIU positions where you're saying, okay, this will be a thousand hours, essentially, or up to a thousand hours of use of this, this part-time person. Is not the case for the sheriff's deputy or a 911 dispatcher or a jail guard. And that's, that's again, back to, to follow that up. I have a budget of X for part time. If I wish to use that on 100 part time deputies, it doesn't matter. That's my budget. Whenever I'm not, I get to call them part time deputy. And what I'm saying is, I'm not, I'm not utilizing that money on part time deputies, so I would like to shift that to part time guards, where I can use them freeing my full time deputy. That's that's the but, shift, but keep it. positions. Like I said, it's 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 a I'll say it's a wash. Um, Better than a wash. We make out. Uh, <laughs> in, in my opinion, in these stats, I'm perfect to the tune of about twenty grand. Right. <laughs> Again, I don't care if he has five hundred single point guards. I don't care. All I want to see is a sheet that says that whatever's being pitched, if it's flat line on the budget, it doesn't cost anything else to, to and then I'll vote for it. I feel like all the information you seek is in the packet. It's you read through this and tell me that you can define the exact number where the budget's where it's gonna affect the budget. Alright, well in the, in the very first case, if Saturday stage for me shift in that schedule is ninety five hundred mil. So I've already done that by moving my debt. Okay, so there's, we'll just say, extra money found. If you flip down to, we'll just say, two-thirds of the way down the clock, let's just look at cost of single point for Monday. Okay, two, the extra two shifts each week, 11400 To man that with my deputy currently is 20900 So there's another 10 9 on top of this 9 so I have 18 already. That's just by moving one of them. A gun carrying guy over to a polo guy. Polo shirt guy. That's it. I mean, in the most simplest of terms. That has to be manned by a deputy, period. So, deputies cost 24 bucks an hour. Single point costs 13 bucks an hour. So, I am letting my deputy go do deputy stuff and creating that extra shift. But I'm, I'm not utilizing my deputies in other places in that part-time budget to cover that. I'm not sending my guys out on part-time deputy on Saturdays mm -hmm. because I'm paying them Mondays and Tuesdays by doubling, taking that same amount, splitting it between two guys or one guy for a single one. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the shift of money. But me getting that guy, my my deputy off of that single point and replacing with somebody half the cost is an automatic saving because now that deputy, I'm not pulling overtime, I'm not pulling that Saturday shift of that guy because he can go do on Thursdays what I would have had to pay him to do on a Saturday. That's that's 
truly the, the bottom line of the money. Okay, so I think we probably have this. I'm sorry, Benny. We got a timekeeping system that says, okay, I'm, I'm working at single point. To me, it's, it's kind of not, it's a visual thing. I see regular deputies down there working. If we go to this concept, I'm going to see guards. So to me, guards at the rate provided versus deputies at the rate paid. If we were to compare the pay, I see it would be less with guards. So to me, that if you look at it like this, it's going to be less. Money. And I see, I see Commissioner Eggleston's point that guard, that deputy that just left that single point, is still getting paid, but he's out doing other things. So now, on his point of view, I just added a single point guy, and the cost thereof. So it's an additional monetary value. But again, him doing this instead of being there is where ultimately that money comes back around. Because now I have less overtime. I don't have to run two squads on a Saturday to serve everything that sat there like this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because they're standing there saying, you have your badge on today, you have this, checking your x-ray. Now, and again, I'm not downplaying that. So you saw that picture the other day that somebody forgot that they had a hatchet and a 12-inch knife in their backpack. Even though that was the only thing in the backpack. <laughs> but I understand when you drop it in that bin, you could have forgotten you had that in there. His intention with that, I have no idea. I, I, I don't, I can't speculate. So I feel, again, very strongly that that needs to stay there. I'm going to shift away from the deputies, augment that so that there is still, just we'll just say, a force there that can be reckoned with, other than we'll just say somebody sitting on a telephone saying, hey, you've got to, and you're already in the courthouse. I, I, I want to eliminate that. I'm going to eliminate that. So, and again, the, the you know, that's where I'm at with that, is to make that what it is, but Mondays and Thursdays, and give it a, a, a run with the guards. But to do that, I need a third guy to keep under her 9999, not the 9924 rule um, to do that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that's discussion. Your motion, as I understand it, is to create a third single point security guard. Third single point security guard and finance that through my already budgeted part-time line. The purpose of the notes that, that's already been explained. The motion specifically is to create the third. Oh yes, the motion specifically would be a third part-time single point entry guard. Do I hear a second to that motion? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Is there anything else that needs to come before the public today? Hearing none, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Motion made a second.